Okay, so how creepy would it be if during this live stream you guys see the creepy hallway behind Dusty? Like a little head peeped out of the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, they don't Yeah. That'd be a little creepy. apartment anyway our house was built in 1924 and we actually had ghost hunters come here once um i was talking to somebody and they were familiar with the house or something i was talking about just some weird things <coughs> that had happened here and they set up cameras and had all this equipment it was pretty crazy this place built 1974 I don't know if I entirely, you know, believe that our house is haunted or anything. Yeah, I stayed, I, stopped, I stayed in your attic, and I didn't feel anything up there myself. But go to your basement, you see that that wall full of dirt. That's awfully suspicious. And I'm, I'm scared yeah. enough that I won't dig into the dirt in there. Because in our basement, there is like, God, how big is it? It's a size big enough for a person to be laying there. Yeah, it's it's at least a good maybe eight feet across. Yeah, it's it's pretty big, but it's just full of dirt. You do a video on it. It's just full, <laughs> I am I won't go in the basement. The basement scares the crap out of me. One time, I had my roommate we were in South Dakota in our apartment, and um, I was playing a game. I swear, I saw this old lady in the nighty walk past my door. I looked over. I'm like, whatever. I'm just there's nothing, you know, whatever. And then about ten minutes later, my roommate comes in my room. He's like, did you see see an old lady walk by the doors? I'm like, yeah. He's like, oh, okay. I thought it was just me. And he walked back in his room. And we never see anything since. And I just, yeah, that's the only experience I had. Um, in our bedroom, like, there's just an area by the closet that's really dark and creepy. And it just, you feel something there, like, kind of like you're being watched. I haven't had this in our room for a long time, but um, it used to freak us out. And when the ghost hunter people came here and they set up the cameras and all that, uh, they wanted to put a camera on top of the dresser that is in that corner. And we were upstairs, but the guy went down there to do that. We were watching the video feed, and the camera, like, got knocked off the dresser. So we figured the guy hit it or something. But he came running upstairs, and he said it just, like, went off on its own. And he was totally freaked out. So I don't know if he accidentally did it or not, but that guy was scared. So that was definitely creepy. Yeah, I was in the Air Force. I was in an old, old, old hangar. And um, there would be times where everyone would have to go to um, uh, FOD checks or FOD runs. Where basically I was the only person left in the hangar by myself. And even though I'm back in the back of the, the back room watching the tools, I'll hear footsteps run up and down the hallway upstairs. And there's no one up there. Yeah. I, when we first moved here especially, um, you would hear people like walking upstairs – You'd hear lots of weird stuff here. Like, a lot of weird stuff happened when we first moved in. And then, um, like, I remember once, uh, like, two of the doors slammed closed at once. And, like, right after each other. And none of the windows or anything were open. It was in the middle of the night. But nothing has happened here for a really long time. We had those ghost hunter people come over. And then um, we tried some cleansing type stuff in our house. And I, I guess that did the trick because nothing's happened here since then. Yeah, it's like I've never actually physically seen something. It's always been like, you know, it's always your side vision or something, like a noise, I mean, even like the footsteps. I mean, it could be like the, the, the air conditioning or a pipe, but it sounds like footsteps, but you never know, you know, unless you see it. Mm -hmm. So that's like, that's like, that's like maybe it was something else and maybe it was that. Yeah, but you know, that's the same thing where my boss died in and a lot of, a lot of happened after he died in that hangar. If you gave me a reasonable explanation for something, you know, I'm totally going to at least consider it. Like, I'm just kind of on the fence about it, but I'm not willing to rule anything out. But I get scared pretty easy about that kind of stuff. So, like, I'm like some of the people in our feed here. I, I prefer not to mess with that kind of thing. I'd rather not know. Hey, Danny's on here. I wish we do ha did have the footage. They filmed, like, three days of footage in our house. And they caught some very unusual stuff, but... Um, after it, <coughs> after they left, they said they were going to edit it or compile it, and then we never heard from them again. Um, they do have a website. We should check it out. RC car used to drive itself at night. That'd be creepy. Where? That's what Alfred just, Alfie just said. Oh, creepy. An RC car that used to drive itself at night. When Lals was a baby, uh, he had lots of those toys you know, that make music and stuff, like the little keyboards and stuff. And when the batteries would go down on them, 
they would kind of misfire and go off on their own. So you'd be in the house dead quiet at night reading a book and then you'd hear like this child's melody in the other room. It used to scare the hell out of me. What's the scariest horror movie you've ever seen? Is it The Grudge? It no. I think the scariest I've ever seen just because growing up would probably be um, Pet Cemetery. Yeah. That's shit to be growing up. That, well, it scared all of us. We have the three of us um, kids in my family, me, Dusty, and our other brother, Devin, and we watched that when we were like nine, and I think that traumatized us, and it wasn't even the movie, it was a smaller part, it was Zelda, the sister that scared the hell out of me and uh, our younger brother. He was the cat. The cat? The cat scared the crap out of me. I we had the a cat. cat. I you love little... church. You were scared of the cat? Little, little so, okay, okay, go, wait, 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 I gotta figure it out. Okay, you were scared of Pet Cemetery because of the cat. And the, the, and grudge, the, the grudge freaked you out, and it also has a cat and a kid in it. You have cat kid phobia. I've diagnosed you, Doctor Gory, in the house. Next patient, please. Well, also, what's what's with like horror movies and little girls that are just creepy as little shit? Little girls are creepy. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Done. Doctor ha- Doctor Gory in it's the like, house. Like in The Shining, even you know that's one of the worst yeah. scenes of the girls in the hallway. Yeah. Have you seen The Children? That shit's scary. No. So here's a topic. What horror movie you feel deserves a sequel? One that I've been told repeatedly I'm going to get a sequel for, but I don't have a fucking sequel for is Behind the Mask: The Rise of Le- Leslie Vernon. They've been no, talking been- about Behind the Mask is really great. Uh, this girl who's a college student, she's doing a documentary on this guy who he believes he's a slasher. Like, he thinks he's like Freddy and Jason, that he can kill people, he has abilities, and he could die and come back. And she's like, you're fucking nuts. I'm going to make a documentary. So she goes and she interviews him, and it's hilarious at the beginning. He explains how, like, you know how Jason's always walking? Mm-hmm. Um, he explains that when they're not looking, he's running, and he has to do a lot of cardio. It's, it's so funny. But then in the second half of the film, it turns into a real slasher movie, and it actually gets really, you know, scary. It's, it's amazing. And I loved the character. I loved how original it was. It had, you know, a lot of great people in there, like Robert England. And uh, we've been told that they're trying to make a sequel happen, but it hasn't happened yet. So that is high on my wish list for a sequel. I would also love a sequel to The Final Girls that came out last year. I didn't say that one either. <laughs> you haven't seen The Final Girls? Ah, oh, it's one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. It was really good, but you don't like a lot of comedy horror, so, and that one's, it's pretty silly. I would like to see a sequel to 13 Ghosts. <laughs> what would they do in the sequel? I don't know, but I like 13 Ghosts. I actually enjoyed that one. I enjoyed that one. It took, that one kind of had to grow on me. Ooh, you know what else I would like a sequel to? I think they're actually working on one. It's Trick or Treat. Did you see that one? Mm-mm. You're killing me, dude. What about the Leprechaun? I, they just came out with it a few years ago, the WWE one, Leprechaun Origins. Really? And it's That's shite. It's a shite. <laughs> Did, I thought they finally killed the damn thing off. <laughs> yeah, can't kill the Leprechaun. That was like the worst Iron There hasn't been a Chucky ever. movie in a while. I like Chucky. There was a Chucky movie a couple years ago, too. Was there? Yeah, with um, Fiona Dorf, who's uh, the voice of Chucky Bad Dorf's daughter in real life. She is a girl in a wheelchair. And- I think the last one I saw was The Bride of Chucky. It's the last one I watched. Nice. Yeah, so that was like back in the 90s. Wow. Then there's Seed of Chucky, which is shite. And then there's Curse of Chucky, which came out a few years ago. And they kind of tried to go back to, you know, the original where it's a creepy doll and not so much of the the comedy. There is a new Chucky. Chucky 7. 2017. They're working on it. I'm down. I want to get Seed of Chucky. I want to watch this. Seed of Chucky is shit, dude. What about Curse of Chucky? Curse of Chucky's amazing. Well, I can't watch Curse Chucky until I watch Seed of Chucky. No, they don't connect. Well, I too, I can't you do can it. I gotta, watch, I, I gotta watch the scene. Don't do it. it. Don't do it. It. Can't, it can't be worse than Ghostbusters, and I watch that. It's crap. worse. No, it, it's not possible. It's worse. It's not possible. Dusty, put down the mouse. It's, it's or put too late. It's already, the mouse. already in it. Don't watch Seed of Chucky. Oh, it's, it's on Amazon Prime. Dusty, don't do it. Doing it. Seed of Chucky is crap. You, it's not worse than Ghostbusters. You're not going to be able to get that hour and a half. Not worse than Ghostbusters. Back. It probably is. No way. It's, it's not possible. Crap. I will watch Postman Pat over I'll watch Ghostbusters. I like Postman Pat, so suck it. Oh, I'm sorry. The, tr- the, the box cover of Curse of Chucky looks freaking creepy. Curse of Chucky, like, because you remember the original yeah, childhood. Bat. 
the original Child's Play, you know, he was scary. I remember when I saw a Child's Play and Child's Play 2 when I was a little kid, Chucky scared the hell out of me. I got the image I sent you on Skype. He looks like that. Yeah, I mean, they made my fat doll. He's not fat. He's a little kid. He's like a cabbage patch. He's like a cabbage patch. He was like that before. I cannot believe you're body shaming Chucky. (laughs) Are you going to get on him next because he's a ginger? Do you hate gingers too? Gingers have no soul. You know. The Cedar Chucky box over looks terrible. Cedar Chucky's shit. Is it about the baby? They have a baby because remember they they boned. Yeah, the at, at the end of Bride, of Bride, yeah. And then the baby popped out, and the baby's name is Glenn. Oh, I, I see. I see a screenshot. He looks terrible. Yeah. It looks like it looks like a really hokey pokey. And it gets they break into Jennifer Tilly's house, who does the voice of Tiffany, and oh, it looks terrible. Oh. It looks, but it's not worse than Ghostbusters. It's terrible. Thank you, Alfie. Gingers unite. What? All right. So I have to agree with Ray. Cedar Chucky, like I told you, is shit. But if you're going to watch it, you should get drunk. I can't get drunk if I'm taking pain meds. You're not on pain medicine until tomorrow. Okay. I'm downloading it right there. Download it. It looks... You never this, listen to me. This, this, this that's, That picture I just think it just shows you how bad it looks. I am wise beyond my ears. I'm trying to warn you. Yeah, I know what he looks like, dude. <laughs> That's bad. Yeah, like Ray was saying, Twilight basically killed down, killed vampires. And I, I thought Warm Bodies was going to kill zombies, but it didn't. I liked Warm Bodies. Warm Bodies was stupid. It was good. I liked the was, book. And with Twilight, it's the same movie. thing. I mean, I, I liked the book, especially because, you know, Forks is in our backyard. We live in Washington State, and so there's a lot of things about it I liked. And the book... A lot of the stuff that's in the movie that's just ridiculous, and the book was supposed to be funny. The book was, te- or the movie was terribly made. I don't think the book was the greatest book ever, but I enjoyed it. I did not enjoy the movie. Oh, one thing I guess you could say about her oh, movie I got than I did. Else, as far as the whole sparkle thing, a lot of people give Twilight shit because of the sparkly vampires, and the reason they sparkle is because their skin is basically stone, like marble. If you hold a stone up to the light, it kind of glitters. But Twilight didn't do it first. Um, Anne Rice did. In Queen of the Dam, they meet very, very old vampires. And she says their skin is like stone, like marble. And she describes them as glittering. So Anne Rice did it first, yo. She started She started glittering vampires. Ray hated warm bodies because he liked it so much he wanted to hate it. Ray, I have to tell you, um, if you liked warm bodies, the book is even better. The book is amazing, and the author did put out a novella that's like a prequel. But, <clears throat> and he's a Seattle author, but it is so beautifully written. If you can get your hands on warm bodies, the book, do that. Because if you love the movie, you're going to love the book. Uh, so the last book I read was called Shadow Divers. That sounds nerdy. It's pretty cool. It's about so much scuba divers, and they find a U-2 submarine. Wow. I am actually, um, I just finished My Best Friend's Exorcism by um, Grady Hendrix, and that Baby. was... Baby. What? He's a go. <laughs> that baby has creepy. I know. But I just read uh, My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix, and I loved, loved that, and... His books, um, pretty much anything by Quirk Publishing, they really go out of their way to make the book um, itself as entertaining as the story. And the book is actually designed like a 1984 yearbook. And it, it's amazing. I loved that book. And right now I'm reading The Complex by uh, Brian Keene, I think. And the writing isn't that great. But it is, um, it's sort of like if Evil Dead took place in an apartment complex. So that's pretty cool. Like my complex full of screaming little kids all the time. That's kind of where, yeah. Hmm. It's it's like your apartment complex. Yeah. The kids never stop screaming. The last book I read was The Intricate Brilliance of Paris Hilton. Uh, yeah, I'm reading The Complex now. I read, what else have I read recently that's really good? I've been reading a lot of great books recently. I've been reading a lot of comic books. I did read all the Suicide Squad comics and they were pretty good. 
Uh, I read all of Hack Slash, which is a horror comic book where um, Cassie Hack is a girl who hunts down slashers. Read all those. Those were great. Oh, actually, there's another book I'm reading. So Danny and I have this thing where we take turns reading to each other at night because, you know, bedtime stories. But uh, we are currently reading each other uh, Five Nights at Freddy's The Silver Eyes. And while the, while the story is interesting, the writing is complete shite. It is so overwritten that, I don't know, it makes it kind of funny. That's what they were on a watch movie. I'm trying, I'm trying to remember. Um, it Follows. I don't ever seen that here. You I haven't I seen watch It Follows? Yeah, I think I want to watch that one. It's, it's very good, and it's very creepy. I loved it. It was uh, probably at least my second favorite horror movie of last year. I think maybe The Voices was my favorite, but it's phenomenal. It's definitely going Isn't to be... Isn't like the SCT topic. bad guy that just falls her around? It's this girl. She has sex with a guy. He ties her to a wheelchair, and he says, okay, you need to understand this demon is going to follow you everywhere now. I gave it to you because we had sex, and the only way for you to get rid of it is to have sex with somebody else. Sounds and like it, a terrible plot. It can, look, download it. it can look like anybody. It can look like people you know, and a lot of times they're like they're really disturbing looking. Like one of them pees itself or or cut up, and if it gets to you, it, it kills you. But um, one of the cool things about it falls is like you're talking before about how the best horror movies are the ones that kind of work on metaphor, where you can enjoy it as a straight horror movie. But you can also find something else there. And with It Follows, I didn't take it so much as being about you have sex and this demon follows you. It was once you become sexual, once you start dating, once you that becomes your world, you're no longer a child. And you can't go back to that. Like in the beginning, we see her playing old maid with her sister and her friends and doing all the stuff we remember doing as kids. You know, walking around the street and smoking cigarettes and just being stupid kids. But once you become, you know, sexually active, once you become about dating and boys and all that, you're, you can't really go back to childhood. And that's why I feel like at the end, you know, a lot of people have seen it as a happy ending because she ends up having sex with this guy who has had a crush on her for forever. And they're walking away and it appears to be behind them a little ways. But, um... I'm going to download it. I'm going to watch it. To me, that seemed like like almost like a tragic ending. Because she was she was tied to this guy that she didn't necessarily want to be with. But she could never go back to just hanging out with her sister. She could never just go back to where they were all friends and everything was innocent. Because there was no more innocence. So, I think it's brilliant. I think you can look at it a thousand different ways and always find something new. But I... I did love It Follows. I wish the Blu-ray had some more special features on it. That's probably about my only big complaint. Also, I have to say my other complaint with It Follows, but I also kind of support it, is their way of, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but their way of trying to defeat It, the demon, is probably the stupidest thing. Penicillin. It's fucking stupid. It is the dumbest. (laughs) But kids are stupid, and kids come up with stupid ideas. And... The way it captured childhood innocence, like the kind of childhood we'd have where, you know, back when we were kids, you'd ride your bike everywhere. You'd hang out with your friends and you'd stay out till dark. And, you know, you had like this own little world amongst you and your your friends and your siblings that your parents weren't a part of. That kind of childhood that we grew up with, it captured perfectly. What's a horror series that should have ended when it was good? I'm thinking Urban Legends. Oh, God, there should not have been. That's more like. There shouldn't have been a sequel. Yeah. There's well, three, but... Yeah, the first one, I like the first one. Then the second one... I want to The third one, the third one, definitely no. What's the other sequels? X-Files? Um, well, somebody just mentioned Lost Boys. Lost Boys, it should have st- stopped with the first one. The first one's phenomenal, but... Um, I, I bought uh, the next two. I've only seen the second one. This, But from what I've seen so far, they are complete shit. You know, it's hard. Uh, I do like all the Nightmare on Elm Streets, but I I enjoyed Freddy best when he was scary in the first one. But I have love for comedic Freddy, too. Um, Jason, I mean, Jason keeps coming back, like, in a good way. Like, there will be a shit, shit uh, sequel. Like, Jason in Space. I enjoy that one. It's stupid, but I love it. But um, I hate part five. Part five's the worst, in my opinion. But then um, it comes... They're all the same. 
I don't know. There's always hope for another great sequel. Any series that's gone downhill. I'm trying to think of one that just went like Leprechaun. Leprechaun should have just stopped. Yeah. Like I like the first one, but then you start getting into Leprechaun in the Hood and stuff, and it just gets ridiculous. Yes, Jason X is a masterpiece. It is. It is hilarious. But is it a horror movie though? I would say yes. They're trying to scare you, and I think if they're trying to scare you, it's a horror movie. But Putting people I in also, a bean bag or a tube bag and knock them on rocks. Okay, uh, that is in homage to my favorite death from Jason Part 7. That's when he first did that, and it was Kane Hodder, and that is my favorite death of all the films. And oh. Jason X also gave us this brilliant dry eyes death. I mean, there are some great parts in there. The part where they go to virtual reality Crystal Lake. Oh, dude, that's a great game. That's a great game to ha- or great game. That's a great movie to have on the background when you've got friends over and you're drinking and chit chatting. Jason X, Jason Damn. in space versus Leprechaun in space. Who wins? Leprechaun was in space. Yeah, Leprechaun went to space. They all go to space eventually, Dusty. They all did, go to space. Did Freddy Krueger go to space? Not yet. There's still time. Oh my. He just got rebooted. Did he? Well, yeah, it was a shitty reboot, but it was, they did the remake, and I know they're, they're I think they're going to remake Yeah, that's again, right, the remake. Which is, it was crap. It had its, it had its moments. Well, see, when we got the first Nightmare on Elm Street movie, there was a lot of stuff going on with, you know, child molestation circles and stuff. So, originally, Freddy Krueger was supposed to be a child molester. Yeah, and- well, that's what they tried to do. They tried to um, put too much in one. They didn't keep anything, they didn't keep anything left over to wonder. Well, I liked that they tried to bring that back because that's something that was intended for the original Nightmare on Elm Street. And um, I liked the things like the micro naps was a cool idea. Mm-hmm. The fact, you know, that they had gone without sleep for so long that their, bo- their brains were shutting down and they were getting like little micro naps of sleep. But, um, and then the idea that she would be trapped in a coma with him forever, that was brilliant. But <sighs> James Earl Hurley was not a great Freddy. Uh, the performances were pretty weak and so much that was awesome in the original movies like uh when freddy comes through the wall and they redid it with cgi that was a practical effect in the original and it looked real but uh, i don't know and they used a lot of the uh original quotes but the way they used them was weird like when uh freddy's chasing nancy in the remake and he says how's this for a wet dream because they're going through this like dream version of the house that's got the floor getting all soggy but uh it doesn't make any damn sense you know girls don't have wet dreams and freddie said that in the original movies in hey, you. four to a guy who saw a naked chick in his bed that makes sense so for me the remake oh. was a fail but i liked a few of the things they attempted it had some interesting ideas in there girls don't have wet dreams jack that's just a girl that's just a girl wet in the bed you are lied to man you are lied to Alfie hasn't seen The Exorcist. If I could get away with putting The Exorcist on a live stream, I would do that right now just for Alfie. Alfie, you need to do that. And are they making an Exorcist TV show now? Oh, I think The Exorcist reminds me of my sister for some reason. That's what our dad said, too. Our dad said that the reason he was terrified of The Exorcist, because he used to have that like, really long hair, is he thought I looked like Reagan. I don't know to be insulted or complimented. Well, you used to always blow your nose a lot, and she had that, that green <laughs> spoon coming out of her. Thanks. <laughs> what version of the exorcist should you watch oh tough call because there's the the um god was it? it's the version you didn't see in theaters i really do like that spider crab walk she does down the stairs but i also kind of want you to see the original theatrical version first so you know, go ahead and watch uh, the, the version you didn't see in theaters because they don't really add that much. And the stuff they add, I thought was pretty cool. Just don't watch like an edited TV version or any kind of edited version of The Exorcist because you need to see all that shit. You need to see it with like the, the clockwork orange things. Like, don't look away. You will watch it. You watch the whole thing. <sighs> I don't know. So... Ray is saying he thinks the crab walk breaks at the pace of the movie. Crab walk. I think it's cool. Okay, how about this? Okay, Alfie, Dr. Gory has got a prescription for you. You, my friend, are going to watch the Blu-ray. Like, don't, don't fuck 
around with this. Don't get no DVD copy. Don't stream this. You go get yourself a Blu-ray. And you watch the theatrical version of The Exorcist. And then, then you watch the, the version you didn't see in theater so you can see all the bonus stuff.